أخرج الإمام الطباري وصححه الألباني من رواية سهل بن سعد رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال مثلي ومثل الساعة كفر سيرهان In the book of the Imam Al-Tabari and classified as authentic by Al-Albani narrated by Sahl ibn Sa'd May Allah be pleased with him The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the similitude of my advent and the advent of the hour is like that of two race horses in a closely contested race. The similitude the Prophet ﷺ gave is a clear indication to the nearness and the closeness of the advent of the hour from the time of his advent sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In another narration to make this clearer to people, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it's also narrated by Sahl ibn Sa'd, but reported by al-Bukhari. He said, me and the hour are as close as these. And he joined the index finger and the middle finger. Allah Azza wa Jal created us in this life and He did not make this worldly life an eternal abode for mankind but rather an interim stage after which one will die. Regardless, regardless of how long we live, death will take place. And after that, Allah Azza wa Jal make, made people think about what's going to happen after their death by making them know and informing them about the hour that's going to take place, the accountability that's going to take place. See, many people think or at least act as though Death is the end of it. With death we conclude the matter. But that's not the case. Because if it was, then everyone would do as he or she pleased. People would kill one another, take each other's wealth, enjoy all desires whether lawful or not, at the expense of others. But the matter is different. Anything we do, whether good or bad, we will see the consequence of at the day of judgment or on the day of judgment. With the advent of the hour, we will see the consequence. We will harvest everything we planted, whether good or evil. And this hour starts with death. And Imam Muslim reported that Aisha radiallahu anha narrated that a group of Bedouins came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked, when is the hour? When is the hour? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and he picked the youngest amongst them. He was a young boy according to one of the narrations. And he said, this boy will not live enough to reach an old age until you, pointing at the elders, until your hour comes. Meaning, by your death. That's why Al-Mughira ibn Shu'ba radiallahu anhu used to tell people when they kept asking about the hour, he said people keep saying the hour, the hour, and they do not know, they are heedless, that the hour is nothing but their death, meaning it starts with their death. 
So the matter is important. The matter is vital. And because of its importance, and because of the tendency of mankind to forget and be heedful, Allah Azza wa mentioned the hour and the advent of the hour and the closeness of the hour in many verses in the Quran. Allah Azza wa says, اِقْتَرَبَتِ السَّاعَةُ وَانْشَقَّ الْقَمَرُ The hour has come near and the moon has split in two halves, which is the miracle at the time of the Prophet ﷺ during his Meccan period when the moon split. The point is the first portion of the verse, اِقْتَرَبَتِ السَّاعَةُ The hour has come near. But one of the most interesting verses with which Allah Azza wa Jal tells us about the nearness and the closeness of the hour is the first verse of Surah al nahl Allah says, Ata Amrullah. Ata means has come in the past tense. Allah Azza wa says, the hour has come. And this is a form the Arabs use in the Arabic language to indicate the nearness of the matter they're talking about. It's already happened. But the hour hasn't come yet. Well, this is to tell us it is as close as it has come. Allah Azza wa Jal further says, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ And fear a day when you will be returned to Allah. But for what? What's so important about the hour? What is so serious and dangerous about the hour? Well, the second part of this very verse tells us, ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ Then every soul will be compensated for what they have earned. So the importance of the hour is not just the advent of the hour, but rather what takes place after the advent of the hour. Allah says, أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَى Did man think that, will he be, that he will be left neglected without being held accountable for what he's done? So the importance of the matter, the importance of the hour, and the reason we need to think about it so often is that because when it comes, which starts with our death, we will be held accountable for all that we've done, all that we've said, all our deeds. As important as it is, yet many people find difficulty in preparation for this event. There are hindrances, there are obstacles that prevent people from preparing for the hour. And for in order for us to overcome these obstacles, we need to first identify them and then work on overcoming them. Well, the Prophet ﷺ identified them for us. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, narrated by Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the heart of an old man grows and grows in age and continues to be attached to two matters he clings he's very keen hubb dunya Love for this worldly life. 
We don't have enough. We don't feel that we've had enough of it. And from its pleasures. وَطُولُ الْأَمَلِ And hopes, false hopes, to live longer. To live longer than what we are predestined to live. Like one of the scholars said, the person at the age of 40 longs to live until 50, and at the age of 50 he longs to live until 60, and so forth and so on, until one is surprised with the angel of death. It's a deception. Hubbu dunya. That's number one. Love for this life. Why? Abu Sa'id al Khudri narrated, and this is in the book of an Imam Muslim, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna dunya hulwatun khadira. This worldly life is sweet and green, meaning it's alluring. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مُسْتَخْلِفُكُمْ فِيهَا And Allah is making you to succeed one another in it, generation after generation. لِيَنْظُرَ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُ So he sees how you act in it. It's sweet. It's deceiving. It's tempting. And that's why people love it so much. Though Allah Azza wa Jal said, "I'lamu, know, أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينة." That this worldly life is nothing but amusement, diversion, and adornment. وتكاثر بينكم وتفاخر بينكم and boasting amongst you to one another. وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ And competition in increase in wealth and children. And then Allah Azza wa Jal, after defining what the reality of this life is, concluded the verse saying, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ وَمَا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ And the pleasure of this worldly life is nothing but deceiving pleasures. طُولُ الْأَمَلِ Hopes, false hopes to live long. Ali ibn Abi Talib was addressing people radiallahu anhu once and he said, the two things I fear the most for you are طُلُ الْأَمَلْ وَاتِّبَاعُ الْهَوَى إِنَّ أَخْشَى مَا أَخْشَى عَلَيْكُمْ طُلُ الْأَمَلْ وَاتِّبَاعُ الْهَوَى The two things I fear the most for you is having false hopes to live long and following your desires. And then he explained. He said, أَمَّا طُولُ الْأَمَلْ فَيُنْسِي الْآخِرَةِ He said, as for having false hopes to live long, well, it makes you forget. It makes you heedless of the hereafter. وَأَمَّا اتِّبَاعُ الْهَوَى فَيُنْسِي الْحَقِّ And as for following desires, it makes one forget or reject the truth. The Prophet ﷺ took Ibn Umar by his shoulder one day, and this is reported by Imam al-Bukhari, and he said to him, as he himself narrated, be in this life like a stranger or a traveler passing by. And count yourself. And count yourself from the people of the graves. Deal with this life 
as a stranger. If someone is going to relocate from one country and live permanently in another country, and on the way he stops in a stopover in a, a different or in a third country for a day, how would people look at him or think about him if he goes down during this one day, buys a house, buys a car, starts establishing himself, and then in less than 40, 24 hours, he picks himself up and goes on the flight and leaves everything behind. People will think he's a fool. Well, this is how a stranger should act. The opposite of that, as the Prophet ﷺ said, don't deal with this world as if you are permanently living in it. Don't let this life deceive you. That's why Ibn Umar, who learned the lesson from the Prophet's words, وسلم, said, if you live long enough to reach the evening, don't have hopes to live until the morning. And if you live long enough to reach the morning, then do not have hope to live until you reach the evening. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make our main concern the hereafter. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد How do we prepare for the advent of the hour? One thing very important Allah Azza wa Jal informed us in the Quran is that the only thing will avail us that will avail us in the hereafter in the hour when the hour comes is having a sound heart. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ When neither wealth nor children will be of any benefit except for those who come to Allah with sound hearts. So we need to work on our hearts and make them sound hearts according to the definition of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Purify them from doubts. Purify them from shirk. Purify them from innovations. Purify them from spite, from envy. Purify our hearts and be sincere and be loving to other Muslims. Wish that your fellow Muslim would have what you have. Be keen on making non-Muslims Muslims in order to get them to the state of salvation in the hereafter. All of these fall under having a sound heart. When one is going on a journey, he takes provision. So the one who takes enough food and drink and what have you, all the needs, especially for those who are driving, they will protect themselves from going hungry or thirsty. And likewise is the journey of the hereafter. It needs provision. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى Take provision. And the best of provision is taqwa, is piety, is being conscious of Allah, is being fearful of Allah. 
That's another form of preparation for the advent of the hour. The Prophet ﷺ taught us by teaching his companions not to make this worldly life the sole and only concern. The top on my list how did he teach us that? Ibn Umar narrated, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi classified as authentic by Al Albani, that never the, did the Prophet ﷺ leave a gathering with his companions except that he supplicated. And he gave a long supplication, but part, a part of the supplication, وَلَا تَجْعَلِ الدُّنْيَا أَكْبَرَ Don't make this worldly life my main concern. The scholars, when they explained this part of the narration, said, you find people who are well aware of worldly matters. But when it comes to matters that will rescue them in the hereafter, at the advent of the hour, you will see them taking the matter lightly, indifferently and they are very very unaware of what will happen and how to take precaution and that's serious that's dangerous one is instructed by Allah Azza wa Jal to learn enough of this worldly life to advance and develop on an individual level, community level, country and a nation. However, this should not be our main or only concern. We should be focused towards the hereafter or else we will not be fulfilling the objective for which Allah the Almighty had created us. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to prepare for that moment, that moment of truth, that serious moment, that moment of the hour. Allahumma fir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa